In section 7.3, we look at the law of cosines. The law of cosines is similar to the law of sines in that it allows us to solve triangles when given certain information about that triangle. For the law of cosines, we can solve triangles when given all three sides, which we call side, side, side. And we can also solve when given side, angle, side. Now, side angle side refers to being given two sides of the triangle and then being given the angle that is in between the two sides. So these are the situations where we can use the law of cosines to solve for a triangle. So we'll call this LOC, law of cosines. So just to review, we know that when we're given angle angle side or angle side angle, for these, we can use the law of sines to solve. And then the ambiguous case is side-side angle. And for this, we also use the law of sines to solve. But we have to remember that this is the ambiguous case. OK, so in this section, we're going to focus on the law of cosines, which deals with solving a triangle when given three sides of the triangle or when giving two sides and the included angle. Now, let's take a look at the law of cosines formula. The formulas are kind of complicated, right? These are more complicated than the law of sines formula. So you'll notice that one of the formulas says that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared, and then minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a. And then the other two formulas are exactly similar to this formula, just with the variables switched around. One thing I would like to point out about the law of cosines is that it's basically a general Pythagorean theorem. And this is really visible if you look at this third formula. So let's remember that when you have a right triangle with side C over here and angle C here, and then you have sides A and B and angles A and B, we know that in this triangle, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or equivalently, we could say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, right? And this is the Pythagorean theorem that you all are very familiar with at this point. If you look at the third law of cosines here, you'll notice that the Pythagorean theorem is sort of the first part of it. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But then we have to subtract 2 times a times b. So that's just 2 times each of these sides. And then times the cosine of the angle c, which is opposite the original side c over here. So in a way, this is sort of like an alternative Pythagorean theorem, or we like to call it a general Pythagorean theorem. And the reason we call it this is because this so-called general Pythagorean theorem can be used for any triangle, not just right triangles. All right, so next what I want to do is go ahead and prove the law of cosines for you, and then we'll do a couple of examples. To prove the law of cosines, here we have our triangle ABC, and we have all the sides and angles labeled, right? So here's angle A, side A, angle B, side B, angle C, and side C. And then to prove the law of cosines, once again, I'm going to draw the altitude from angle C down to the opposite side C. And that divides up this side into two parts. I'm going to call the first part here x. And then this other part has to be c minus x, right? Now, what do we know about this diagram? Well, if we use the Pythagorean theorem on this little triangle here, we can see that x squared plus h squared is equal to b squared. Right, so we're just taking this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. 
And in the other triangle, we can do the same thing. We can say h squared plus c minus x squared is equal to a squared. So again, we're just taking this side and squaring it plus this side and squaring it, and it equals the hypotenuse squared. Now what I can do here is I can solve for h squared. In the first equation, h squared is b squared minus x squared. And I can plug that into here. So if we do that, we get b squared minus x squared plus, and then I'm going to multiply this out. So c minus x quantity squared. I'll just show the work here real quick. This should give us c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. So now if I plug that in, we have c squared minus 2cx plus x squared, and that's equal to a squared, right? So again, we substituted h squared is equal to this thing. That's how we got that part there. And then c minus x quantity squared, when you multiply it out, you get that. And now if you simplify, you should be able to see that negative x squared and positive x squared cancel out. And we have b squared plus c squared minus 2 times c times x is equal to a squared. So what we're trying to do is get rid of the h and the x because those are not parts of the original triangle. So now all I need to do is say, well, what is x equal to? Well, if you look at the picture here, you can see that x is a side in this smaller triangle here and it's the adjacent side to angle A. So we could say that cosine of angle A is equal to x divided by B, right? Cosine of angle A is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse in this little right triangle. If you multiply both sides of that by B, you get x is equal to B times the cosine of A. And that expression for x can replace the x that we have down here. And if we do that, we get b squared plus c squared minus 2c times x, which is b cosine of a, is equal to a squared. And now if we simply rewrite that, I can say a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times c times b. I can write that as b times c and then times the cosine of a. And this is the first law of cosines formula. But again, I just want to point out that, you know, all of the law of cosines formulas are very similar to each other, right? So the idea is that if you know one of these formulas, you should know them all because they all have the same format. All right, let's go ahead and do an example now. So in our first example, we are asked to find the missing parts of the triangle ABC. If angle A is 60 degrees, it's this angle here. Side B is 20, that's this side here. And side C is 30. And so you can see that we have a side here, a side here, and an angle in between the two sides. So this is side, angle, side. So this is appropriate to use the law of cosines. When you have side, angle, side, the first thing you should find is the missing side. So we know to find side A, A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of A. And now all we have to do is plug in the information. So right here, B squared is going to be 20 inches squared. And I'll just put 20 in. I'll leave the units out. C squared will be 30 inches squared, and then minus 2 times 20 times 30 times the cosine of angle A, and angle A is 60. So this is what A squared is equal to. So what we can do is just basically plug all this into a calculator to get A squared, and then we'll take the square root of that answer to get the result. So let's go ahead and plug this into a calculator. So you can see once we do this calculation, we get a squared is 700. And this means that if you take the square root of both sides, 
This is going to give us a is equal to the square root of 700. And the square root of 700 is approximately, well, you've got to round this to two significant digits, so we're going to say it's approximately 26. So we have a is approximately 26. That's the first part of this triangle that we're able to solve for. Now, the other two parts that we need are angle C and angle B. Now, this is really important. Which one of those should you find first, or does it matter? It actually does matter. Once you find the missing side, you can find either of the angles by using the law of sines. We don't have to use the law of cosines anymore. And when doing this, you should always find the smaller angle that remains, okay? So we are going to use the law of sines to solve for the smaller angle that remains. So which one is a smaller angle, right? So we have angle C and we have angle B. Well, look at the sides opposite. Angle B, the side opposite is 20. Angle C, the side opposite is 30. The larger side is, has the larger angle, and the smaller side has the smaller angle. So the smaller angle is angle B. So I'm going to use angle, excuse me, I'm going to find angle B by using the law of sines. So we'll say sine of B divided by B is equal to, and now we can say sine of A divided by A, because we now know what A is. Now, when I do this, we're going to have sine of B divided by side B, which is 20, is equal to the sine of angle A, which is 60 degrees, divided by side A. Now, you have to be kind of careful here. For side A, you don't want to use 26, because 26 is a rounded answer. So you can either use the decimal that you got here, and if you do use that decimal, you don't have to do all the decimal places, but I would recommend doing four decimal places. So you could use that value. Or you could just use the square root of 700 because that's what that value, or that's where that value came from. Now, I'm just going to use the decimal approximation 26.4575. And then we can solve for angle B by multiplying both sides by 20. And then finally, we can take the inverse sine of both sides. And now I'll just plug that into a calculator to get an approximate answer. And if we round this answer to the nearest whole degree, this is going to be 41 degrees. So now we know angle B is approximately 41 degrees. Now, once we know angle B, we can find angle C by simply taking 180, subtracting angle A, and subtracting angle B. And if you do this, this is going to give us 79 degrees for angle C. All right, so that third angle is always very easy to find. In our second example, it says the diagonals of a parallelogram are 24.2 centimeters and 35.4 centimeters, and they intersect at an angle of 65.6 degrees. So here's a picture. A parallelogram is a four-sided polygon where the opposite sides here are parallel and the opposite sides here are parallel. Now, one of the diagonals, the longer diagonal, is 35.4 centimeters. That's this diagonal here. And the other diagonal is 24.2 centimeters. And one thing we know from geometry is that when the diagonals of a parallelogram intersect, it divides them each into equal segments, right? So this 24.2 centimeters is divided equally. So if you just divide 24.2 by 2, you get 12.1 centimeters. So that's how long this is. 
And then the other diagonal is also divided equally. So this diagonal was 35.4 centimeters. If you divide that by two, you get 17.7 centimeters. Now they also tell us that the diagonals intersect at an angle of 65.6 degrees. Oops, and this is not labeled correctly. This should be 65.6 degrees. Let's change that. There we go. And now they want us to find the length of the two shorter sides of the parallelogram. Okay, well, the two shorter sides would be this side here and this side here. And we know those are the two shorter sides because if this angle is 65.6, this angle is the supplement of that, which is a larger angle. And that means that this side will be larger than this side, okay? So we're basically just solving for x. So we can use the law of cosines to do this. Notice that what you have here is a triangle here. And you know this side of the triangle, this side of the triangle, and the angle between the two sides. And so this, once again, is the situation side, angle, side. So the missing side of the triangle squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two given sides, which is 17.7 squared plus 12.1 squared. And then it's minus 2 times the two sides, so times 17.7 times 12.1, and then times the cosine of the angle between the two sides, which is 65.6 degrees. So to get x squared, all I need to do is plug this into a calculator. And you can see that the value that we get here is 282.7508485. So that is the value of x squared. Now, again, don't round that number yet because x is going to be the square root of that number. So you have to wait until after you take the square root and then you round that. Now, if you have most calculators, if, if this is displayed on the screen, you can simply hit square root of the answer. So it'll kind of look like this, the square root of the answer, and that'll take the square root of the last number that was on your calculator. So that's the way I'll do it on mine. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here you can see we had this answer on our calculator. We took the square root of that answer and we get approximately this number. We're going to round this to three significant digits. And so x is approximately equal to 16.8. And again, this is measured in centimeters. In the next problem, we are asked to solve triangle ABC, and you can see in this triangle, we have been given all three sides. So side A is 34 kilometers, side B is 20 kilometers, and side C is 18 kilometers. So first, let's go ahead and draw a simple diagram of a triangle. So all I need to do here is make a triangle, label the three sides, 34, 20, and 18. And now you have to be careful to label the angles. So side A was 34, so the angle opposite 34 would be angle A. Side B is 20, so this would be angle B, and then angle C would be here. Now in this problem, you are solving for the three angles. So to do this, you're going to start by using the law of cosines to find the largest angle. This is very important. So when using the law of cosines to find the first angle, always find the largest angle. The largest angle in this triangle is angle A because it is opposite the largest side. So to find angle A, I need to use the formula that involves angle A. That formula is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of A. Now, there's two ways to approach doing this. You could plug in all the numbers and then solve for A, or we can solve for A first, and that's the way I'm going to do it. So to do this here, I'm going to subtract A squared from both sides, and I'm going to add 2BC cosine of A 
to both sides. Now when we do this, on the left-hand side, these cancel out. On the right-hand side, these cancel out. And what we get left over here is 2BC cosine of A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared. Now to solve for A, the next step here is I'm going to divide both sides by 2BC. And doing that gives us cosine of A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared divided by 2BC. Now, this is actually the formula I'm going to use. Now all we have to do is plug in all the information. So in this problem, cosine of A is equal to B squared, that's 20 squared, plus C squared, C is 18, so that's 18 squared, minus A squared, which is 34 squared, divided by 2 times B times C. That is what the cosine of A is equal to. Now again, you could do one of two things here. You can plug this into a calculator, or you could simply take the inverse cosine of both sides and plug it all into the calculator at once. So if you do that, this is what it looks like. Most students do not prefer to do it this way, okay? Because plugging this into the calculator can get to be a little bit tedious. So what most students will do is they will get the answer for this, and then they will just put that number in here. So let's go ahead and get this answer. So if we plug this into the calculator, we get negative 0.6. And then now all you would have to do is say A is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 0.6. And that gives us approximately 127 degrees. Now, the other way to do it is you could just plug all of this into the calculator at once. And if you do it that way, this is what it looks like. And so you can see you get the same answer, but I want you to notice that there's a lot of parentheses that you have to type in, right? And if you're missing any one of these parentheses, you could get the wrong answer. So I kind of don't recommend doing it this way, but I want you to notice that you do also get 127 degrees, and this is approximate, okay? So we now know that angle A is approximately 127 degrees. Now, once you have the first angle, you can then find the next angle by using the law of sines. And the next angle I'm going to find is angle C, because when using the law of sines, you should always find the smaller angle that remains. So using the law of sines, we have sine of angle C divided by the side opposite angle C, which is 18, is equal to the sine of, I'm going to use angle A. Now when I use angle A, uh, oh, A is 127, yeah, it's right there. And then divided by side A, side A is 34. So sine of C is 18 sine of 127 divided by 34. So C is going to be the inverse sine of this. And if we plug that into a calculator, we get the following. And that tells us that angle C is approximately 25 degrees. And of course, once you have angle C, we can get angle B by simply subtracting angle A and angle C. And so 180 minus 27 minus 25 is 180 minus 152, and that gives us an angle of 28 degrees for angle B. In our last example, we have a plane is flying with an airspeed of 185 miles per hour with a heading of 120 degrees. So here is the north vector. 120 degree heading, we come clockwise from north, 120 degrees. And then that speed right there is this vector, which is 185 miles per hour. 
So the length of vector v here is 185. And then it tells us the wind currents are running at a constant 32 miles per hour at a heading of 165 degrees. So once again, now from this point, I draw a new north vector. 165 degrees is this angle, and the speed of the wind here is 32 miles per hour, so that means the length of this vector is 32. So basically, you have a triangle here. You've got this side is 185, this side is 32, and we want to find the true course and ground speed of the plane. So we want to find how fast the plane is actually traveling. That's the length of this side right here. And then we also want to know what's the direction that the plane is traveling in. So to answer that question, we need this angle beta here because the direction is going to be from north 120 degrees plus beta, right? So we need to know what beta is. And so to do this problem, first of all, we need to know theta. Theta is the angle between these two sides. We can find that, though. We can find that relatively easily. So first of all, remember that a north vector here and a north vector here, those are parallel lines. And then this line right here is a transversal. So if this angle is 120, this angle right here has to be the supplement of 120, which is 60 degrees. Now, if we know that this angle is 60 degrees, this angle here plus this angle here plus theta, that has to equal 360, right? Because that is one full rotation. So we know that 60 degrees plus 165 degrees plus theta has to be equal to 360 degrees. And if you add these together, you get 225 degrees plus theta equals 360 degrees. And that allows us to solve for theta by subtracting 225 degrees, which gives us 135 degrees for theta. So we now know that this angle theta is 135. And so now we have a side angle side situation, right? And we can use the law of cosines to find the length of the missing side, and then we can use the law of sines to find the angle left over there. All right, so let's go ahead and use the law of cosines. I'm gonna call this length here, I'm gonna call that x for simplicity. We know that x squared is equal to 185 squared plus 32 squared minus two times 185 times 32 times the cosine of the angle in between, which is 135. Let's plug that into a calculator. And you can see that this number here is 43,621.14429, but x is going to be the square root of that number. And I went ahead and did that on the calculator. The square root of that number is 208.85, so we're going to say x is approximately 209. So this is the length of this vector here. And that represents the true ground speed of the plane. So the plane is actually traveling 209 miles per hour. Now to find the true course of the plane, we need to solve for the angle beta here. And we can do that using the law of sines. So let me erase some of the information in here just to clear things up a little bit. There we go. So to use the law of sines to find beta, we know that the sine of that angle beta divided by the side opposite beta, which was the 32, has to be equal to the sine of the angle 135 degrees, which is this angle right here, divided by the length of the side opposite that, which was the 208.8568, right? So I don't want to use the rounded version of that. And now if I solve for beta, we're going to end up getting beta is the inverse sine of 32 sine of 135 divided by 208.8568. Now I didn't show all my work here solving for beta, but it is very similar to the problems that we have been doing 
So I'm going to trust that you all are able to do that. Now let's go ahead and plug that into a calculator. And you can see when we do that calculation, we get 6.2195. So we're going to say beta is approximately 6.2 degrees. Now that's not the actual answer. They want the true heading of the plane. Well, the true heading is the original 120 degrees plus this angle beta. So it's going to be 120 plus 6.2 which of course is 126.2 degrees. So this is the true heading of the plane and the true speed of the plane is 209 miles per hour.